Hi folks. So in this video, I'm going to continue working on Pong in Pygame. So in the last video, I'm going to show how far I'd gotten. You can see I'd added the ball and it automatically starts moving and there is some initial collision here, but nothing else really happens. So once it goes off the screen, I don't have a register for who scored and I don't have a way of resetting the game. So that's what I'm going to start this video with. I want to add a little bit of logic. So previously, I'd added in this Pong move function, which was part of the, uh, the ball class. So essentially that moves the ball around and it checks for collision. And lastly, it looks for whether the ball has gone out of bounds to the left or the right and returns who the winner is. So I take this variable here, but at the moment I don't do anything with it. So what I'd like to do is add a condition, which is going to be called live ball. And I'm going to start this off with false. So I want an action that's going to start the game essentially, and once that's started, live ball will be set to true. And that action is going to be down here. So where I already have my event handlers, at the moment I'm only looking for a single event, now I'm going to look for a mouse click. And that's done by if event.type. So now I look for pygame.mouse button down. And at the same time, I want to check whether the live ball uh, currently is set to false, because I don't want to be able to just keep resetting the ball. So as long as these conditions are met, then I can set live ball to true, and that starts the game. Every time this happens, I want to be able to reset the ball's position. So at the moment, the ball is created once within this class, and then that's essentially it. So I want to define a new function down here, which is going to be called reset. Say define reset. And it will be an extension of the init function. So it's going to take the same variables, x and y. And I'm just going to copy everything from here into reset. Put that there. And if I come back into my init function, I'm going to now call the reset self dot reset and feed in those x and y coordinates so this might be a little bit complicated essentially the init function when I first create the, this instance will run this reset function it'll provide the x and y coordinates and it will create the ball just as normal but what this function also means is that I can call this whenever I need to through the code and it will automatically reset all the conditions back to zero or back to the original starting values. So with this defined, I can now call this anytime I click. So I just need to say here, pong, which is the instance, dot reset, and I just give it the same conditions that I had right at the beginning. So the x and the y coordinates that I want the ball to restart at. Okay, so I'm just going to run to check if this works. And I seem to have made a mistake, but I've missed another equal sign there. Try again. There we go. So I'm clicking, the ball goes off, and initially I had it set at false. So as soon as I clicked, I reset the ball and it restarted again. But I'm still not registering anything happening when the ball goes off the screen. And that's where I'm going to use that live ball variable now. So at the moment, I want to continue drawing the paddles. That's fine. But everything down here. So the movement of the ball, or rather drawing the ball on the screen, moving around the paddle, and looking for the winner, I want all this to be only happening when the ball is live, i.e. there's a round that's being played. So I'm going to just wrap all of this inside an if statement. If live ball is true, i.e. we're currently playing a round, then let's say I'll move this to the top. So I want to be moving the ball, as long as the ball is live, I want to be moving it and I want to be looking for the winner. So as soon as the ball has gone off the screen, this variable is going to change from zero to either one or minus one, depending on who scored. And now I can iterate again with my if statements for who the winner is. So first of all, if no one has yet won, so if the game is continuing, well then I can keep moving the paddle. So that's fine. I'll put that in here. And the game continues as normal.
and I also want to draw the ball at the same time. So I'm going to put this up here as well. Uh, so essentially I'm saying as long as there's a current round going and nobody's won, then the game just goes on as normal. But if that's not the case, so if winner is not zero, then I want to end the round. So live ball becomes false and I look for who the winner is. If winner is one, which means the player is one, then I just increase the score by one. And otherwise, if the winner is negative one, then the CPU has scored a point. So that means the CPU gets an extra point. So I'll run this code now just to test and nothing's happening at the moment. As soon as I click, the game starts, the ball's gone out, and I've scored a point. So I click again, and I reset the ball, and I score another point. So this essentially is a bit of a mechanic of the game, and I can keep clicking, but nothing happens until the point has been scored. So all these variables are now working fine together. The next thing to do then is to add some AI. Uh, this actually is quite straightforward. I'm going to come into this paddle class, and at the moment I have a move function defined, so this allows me to move the player paddle up and down. I'm just going to add another function, which is going to be called AI. It's not going to take anything other than self. And I'll add a comment to say AI to move the paddle automatically. And all I'm going to be looking for is for the paddle to try and track the movement of the ball. So if you remember, both of these are rectangles and they both have their various coordinates, the top, the bottom, the central position. So I just want to add code in here to make the AI paddle try to line up its own center with the ball. That way it's going to track the ball pretty much up and down the screen. So I'll add the first section, move down, and I'll type this out first and I'll explain what's going on. So self rect center y, so basically the middle of the paddle, if that is less than, and is the y coordinate, therefore it's above, pong.rect.top. So if it's gone above the rectangle, then I want this paddle to move down. But I don't want it to go all the way off the screen. So I'm going to add these uh, limits just like I did up here. So and self.rect bottom is less than the screen height, meaning that it's still above the screen height, uh, the bottom of the screen then self.rect and again it's the same as the function that I used up here for moving the player paddle up and down so self.rect.moveIP which is move in place x coordinate doesn't change and the y coordinate in this case we're moving down so it increases in a positive direction so it moves uh, by speed and now I can just copy this down here and change this to move up. I'm going to be looking for the same set except now I'm looking for greater than the rectangle bottom. Oh, and I missed an M here. So this is going to be doing the same thing. It's going to try and line up the center of the paddle with the uh, the pong, uh, the ball. But I don't want this to go off beyond the margin. So if the top of the rectangle is below the margin, i.e. greater than, only in that case do we continue to move. But now I want to be moving up, so the y-coordinate decreases, so it moves in a negative direction. Uh, so that's fine, that's defined, but I haven't called it yet. I'm going to have to come into my main loop here, where I have my player paddle move, and now I say CPU paddle, but I don't call move, Instead, I call AI. If I call move, then it's going to move up and down just together with the player paddle when I press the up and down arrow keys. So I'll run this code now and I'll start the game. And you can see now the paddle is moving up and down. There's no collision, so it went straight through, but it's following the ball. Every time I click, it's going to follow the ball until it goes out of play. So that's the last thing left to add now in this is the collision. And that is also quite simple to add. There are many different ways of doing collision within Pygame and they range from very basic uh, kind of rugged to more complex uh, pixel perfect collision. I'm using rectangles for both the paddle 
and the ball. So in this, it makes sense to just use rectangle collision that's already built into Pygame. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for the level of the game that I'm making here, considering these are just a bunch of rectangles moving around on the screen. So I'm going to capture this collision section within the move function of the ball class. And I'm just going to add it down here where I'm already looking for collision for the top and bottom of the screen. I'll say check collision uh, with paddles. And here I can make use of Pygame's built-in collide rect function. So I'll say if self rect, so if the ball rectangle dot collide rect, meaning if it's collided with the target rectangle, which is going to be the player paddle, or, and then I can just copy this, because now I'm going to be checking against the CPU paddle. So if it collides with either one of these paddles, then all I want to do is flip the X direction, or rather the X speed of the ball. So if it's going in the right direction, so the X is increasing and it bounces off the player paddle, then I just want it to move in the opposite direction. So self speed underscore X multiplied by itself times negative one. So it's the same more or less as what I've done above with the Y speeds. It's just this one is left and right. If I run this code now and start the game, it bounces off here and I can knock the ball back. So that's all working pretty well now. So that's essentially the basic mechanics of this game. Everything more or less is working, but I'd like to make the game a little bit more user friendly. So I need to add some player feedback and some text on the screen just to explain what's going on and to give some instruction to the player to know what to do. For example, clicking the button to start the game. And on top of that, I want to add a little bit of extra challenge by increasing the speed at which the ball moves. So I'll have a little timer or a counter that increases and when it reaches a certain value, the ball speed will then move up by one. I'm going to do all of that in another video. So in the meantime, if you found this useful, then please leave a like. And if you'd like to stay up to date with more videos, then please subscribe. So thanks for watching.